are these people? Um, we've talked about this before, actually. It's why I brought it. Um, but I also thought my thumbnail was good. Uh, you know, it speaks so much. This is practically the debate we just had to, you, you know, are forced to watch in our Twitter feeds. It's practically the same <laughs> image, no? You know, blue yeah. Zionist versus red Zionist. It's very good. <laughs> um, Ramsey Baroud over in Consortium News, right? We're going to talk about this guy. You, you know him? You recognize that guy? Um, yeah. 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 So Zionism versus Zionism, right? But Ramsey writes, Israeli National Security Ministry Itamar bin Gavir vowed on August 26th to build a synagogue inside the Muslim holy site, Al Haram al Sharif. Bin Gavir, as a representation of Israel's powerful religious Zionist class and the government and society at large, has been candid regarding his design and occupied East Jerusalem and the rest of Palestine. He has advocated a religious war, calling for the ethnic cleansing of Palestinians the starvation or killing of prisoners and the annexation of the West Bank. Right? So I have this video. It has music in it, so I'm actually going to have to mute it. Right? But I will read I will read this guy's words unfortunately. Um so how do I do? I do this, I full screen and then we go here. There we go. Um so I do say that this is the going way too fast let's slow that down first of all um playback speed there um i do say this is the state of israel there is no such thing as palestine this is ours this is our land do you want to live here welcome will the palestinians this is this interviewer down here will the palestinians obtain a state an entity there is no such thing no state and no entity. We saw what happened when they wanted self-rule. Will they be given Israeli citizenship? No, definitely not. Israeli citizenship, what will you do with the Palestinians there? What will their status be? So I'll tell you, they will get exactly the same status that they had before they entered our lives. By the so-called Curse Oslo Accords, you dismantle the authority. I dismantle the Palestinian Authority who was responsible after the dissolution of the authority. The authority that teaches how to kill Jews. The authority that funds the resistors. Elections. Will they participate in voting somewhere? They will not participate in voting for the Israeli Knesset. They will not choose, and I am also against self-rule. I do not support granting them control over their lives and managing themselves. Can they apply for Israeli citizenship? No, they can't do that. And to continue the process of loyalty, no, they'll not be able to apply for citizenship. And to obtain their ID cards, they will not become blue identity cards. So that's... They will not become Israelis. That's pretty much well, his opinion. Well, right. That, I think he's doing them a favor. So, yeah. To be yeah. honest. Well, if we can call it that. But to continue, in his capacity as a minister in the equally extremist government of Benjamin Netanyahu, Ben Gavir has worked hard to translate his language into action. He has raided the Palestinian Al Aska Mosque repeatedly and implemented his starvation policies against Palestinian detainees going as far as defending rape inside Israeli military detention camps and calling the accused soldiers our best heroes. His supporters have carried out hundreds of assaults and dozens of pogroms targeting Palestinian communities in the West Bank. According to the Palestinian Ministry of Health, at least 670 Palestinians have been killed in the occupied West Bank since the start of the Gaza War. A large number among those killed and injured were victims of illegal Jewish settlers. Not all Israelis in the political or security establishment agree with Ben Gavir's behavior or tactics. For example, on August 22nd, Israel's Shin Bet chief Ronan Barr warned against the indescribable damage to Israel caused by Ben Gavir's actions in East Jerusalem. Okay? The damage to the state of Israel, especially now, is indescribable. 
global delegitimization, global delegitimization even among our greatest allies, Barr wrote in a letter sent to several Israeli ministers. Barr's letter may seem odd. The Shin Bet has been instrumental in the killing of numerous Palestinians in the name of Israeli security. Barr himself is a strong supporter of the settlements and as hawkish as is required for the person who leads such a notorious organization. Colin, where do you think this is headed? Da, 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 da. Who do you who do you think they are going to try to blame this all on? Like even though they are instrumental in the same killing. Like you know, uh, they're they're trying to blame it on the BB. They're trying to bl- trying to blame it on a BB. I know. That's what they're trying to do. Uh, this is it's just the political leaders now, Colin. It's not been any of the historical leaders that have done the same exact bullshit, right? So, uh, yeah, Barr's conflict with Ben Gavir, however, is not that of substance, but style. This conflict is only an expression of a much greater ideology and political war among Israel's top institution. This war, however, began before October 7th and the ongoing Israeli war and genocide of Gaza. Seven months before the start of the war, Israeli President Isaac Herzog said in a televised speech that those who think that a real civil war is a border we won't cross have no idea. The context of his comments was the real deep hate among Israelis resulting from the attempts by Netanyahu and his extremist government coalition partners to undermine the power of the judiciary. The fight over the Supreme Court, however, was merely the tip of the iceberg. The fact that it took Israeli five elections in four years to settle on a stable government in December 2022 was itself indicative of Israelis' unprecedented political conflict. The new government may have been stable in terms of the parliamentary balances, but it destabilized the country on all fronts, leading to mass protests involving the powerful but increasingly marginalized military class. The October 7th attack took place at a time of social and political vulnerability, arguably unprecedented since the founding of Israel atop the ruins of historic Palestine in May 1948. The fight over... Wait, I read that. The October 7th attacks took place at a time of social and political vulnerability, arguably unprecedented since the founding of Israel atop the ruins of historic Palestine. The war, but particularly the failure to achieve any of its objectives, deepened that existing conflict. This led to warnings from politicians and military men that the country was collapsing. The clearest of these warnings came from Yitzhak Brick, former top Israeli military commander. He wrote in Haaretz on August 22nd that the country is galloping towards the edge of an abyss and that it will collapse within more than a year. Though Brick was blaming amongst various factors, Netanyahu's losing war in Gaza The anti-Netanyahu political class believes that the crisis mainly lies in the government itself. This solution, according to recent comments made by Herzog himself, is that Kahanism needs to be removed for the government. Have have you heard of Kahanism, Care Bear? No. Okay, well, you're going to learn. Kahanism here is a reference to the cock party of Rabbi Mir Kahane, though now banned... Kak has resurfaced in numerous forms, including in Bin Gavir's Atma Yehudi party. As a disciple of Kahane, Bin Gavir is set to achieve the vision of the extremist rabbi, that of completing ethnic cleansing of the Palestinian people. Okay, so it's, I imagine, similar to Wahhabism, right? That's what it sounds like to me. Um... Ben Gavir and his ilk are fully aware of the historic opportunity that is now available to them as they hope to ignite the much coveted religious war. They also know that if war in Gaza ends without advancing their main plan of colonizing the rest of the occupied territories, the opportunity may not present itself ever again. Ben Gavir's rush to achieve the religious Zionist agenda contradicts the traditional forms of Israeli colonialism. 
predicting on the incremental genocide of Palestinians and the slow ethnic cleansing of Palestinian communities from East Jerusalem and the West Bank. Though the Israeli military believes that illegal settlements are essential, they perceive those colonies in a strategic language as a security buffer for Israel. The winners and losers of Israel's ideological and political war are most likely to emerge following the end of the Gaza War, the outcomes of which will determine other factors, including the very future of the state of Israel, for the estimation of General Yitzhak Britz himself. So, to me, this is after the war's over, blame it on Bibi, and clean those hands of all the blood, we're good, we did it. Like... Uh, you know what I mean? That to me is, I think, where they're headed I mean, there. Uh, yeah, Ben Gavir is basically Trump. Yeah, like basically. I like, mean, I, but which it, which is which is kind of weird to say, considering that there's BB, but it's just the idea that there's someone more nuts than him. Like, yeah, but they're both they're both they're both, but like it's the entire core is rotten. You know, yeah. so it's no, uh, but, but it kind of brings up the idea of like bad and less bad. Well, if like, you think about that we kind of, when we last talked about blaming BB, right? We talked about how they uh, kicked him out at one point for not being as you know sadistic aggressive. as possible, right? No, like, right? Yeah. So I think that's going to be the case here. And when the hostages mm -hmm. things are involved, especially when they bring up that Hannibal directive and how that might have been all Israel and all that stuff comes out, that all gets blamed on the BB government. That's not the problem of Israel and the people who are willing to do that to advance their needs here. So, you know, well, it's, and it's going to be just the protests in Israel. It's not yeah. over the ideology of zionism which ultimately is what no. he is it's bb well it's like and, you're not working hard enough to get the hostages out of there right or That's you're not being protest. strategic enough and you're not uh, you know the the world hates us because you're not doing this well enough that kind of thing right. and then it's also carte blanche giving every idf member who has to man, man you know they're mandated to serve right they're just following orders where have we heard that before? Right? right. So, yeah, that's where I think that's headed. But, ugh. Anyway, talking about these things, why we're demonetized. So you can go to co-fee.com slash Indie News Network or scan that QR code on your screen. Or you can put that little exclamation mark donate in the chat if you're watching this live. Um, links to all ways to support us are down on that doobly do. But if you can't give monetarily, very easy. Hit the like button. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Share the video. Why not? You know? Leave a comment. Let us know what you think. You might think we're idiots. Put that down there. I don't know. Do something. Anyway, thanks for watching, I guess.